Believe it or not, people commonly ask if it's possible to weld stainless steel with mild steel filler rod. Say something like ER70S-2 for TIG welding, or maybe even ER70S-6 for MIG welding. Well, I've got the answer for you, and I also have some bonus material at the end of this episode, but I can't tell you what it is, because, well, it's a surprise. Now this is ER308 stainless steel filler wire. It's most commonly used for welding grade 304 stainless steel together. One of the most common ones you see at least. This is ER70S-2 filler wire with the copper coating removed on it. ER70S-2 and S-6 are commonly used for mild steels or carbon steels, whichever one you want to refer to them as. Now I did remove the copper coating on this one so you can't tell the difference between either one of them behind the camera when we actually get to welding them. Now one thing I cannot hide is my Fronius Transteel 2200, which will be happily spitting out a spool of ER70S-6. So we're going to MIG weld them, we're going to TIG weld them, and we're going to answer that question, can you actually MIG and TIG weld stainless steel with mild steel filler rod? Let's find out. Now let's line up two coupons here, have a look. One of them is being welded with ER308 filler wire. The other one is being welded with ER70S-2. Now both of them are fired at 100 amps and both of them are 1 8 in thickness and they're both 304 stainless steel. But which one, well, I'm gonna leave that a mystery. Maybe you can figure it out, maybe you can't because after this, I'm gonna flip one of them over and I'm gonna fire it off with my Fronius Transsteel 2200, which is being fed with a spool of ER70S-6. Now the difference between the two of these, you'll never notice to really weld them, but once you start spraying them down with a solution that makes it rust, two minutes into it, you'll see the difference between the two of them. Now this rusting solution is nothing more than hydrogen peroxide, white vinegar, and salt. Five minutes in, you can see it start eating it alive. Versus the stainless steel, even eight minutes in, there's almost no difference. The stainless steel, that's why it's stainless steel. Now for fun here, let's actually drain this off of here. You can see that they were both covered in the same solution, but only one of them is subject to rusting because, well, regular mild steel, carbon steel, just plain old steel, well, it rusts. Stainless steel does not. That's the beauty of it. It's pretty wild. Those are some pretty interesting results. I've always wanted to actually do this and find a way to show it, and finally I think I have. So at the end of the day, the answer is yes, you can absolutely can weld stainless steel with mild steel filler rod like ER70S-2 or S-6. The only problem is obviously it's gonna rust. So this episode is a little bit short, so we're gonna throw in some bonus material, and that has to do with the impregnation of foreign metals into your stainless steel. So you always heard the saying before in many different channels and many different books and many different teachings that you should always use like metals for uh, cleaning and preparation. So if you are using a wire brush to clean your surface, say with like stainless steel, you'll want to use a stainless steel only wire brush or a wire brush that's dedicated to stainless steel and one that is made out of stainless steel. That way it won't actually impregnate anything into that metal. Same thing goes with aluminum and all the rest of that good stuff. So I have prepped up here a couple of pieces where I did the exact same welds as I did before. One with stainless steel and one of them with ER70S-2 and S-6 on the MIG reel. But I also added another bonus piece into there where I buffed out another piece where it was half of a coupon was actually washed away with that. So with that, let's grab a hold of our rusting solution and see what happens when we spray them down after they've been impregnated with a dirty brush. Kind of let these sit here for a minute. Look at that. You can actually see them starting to actually react. That's pretty impressive. But let's get some time lapse action on here and see exactly what they look like in about two, three, five minutes and so on. Now this is after about two minutes. You can see that it's starting to, uh, well, all of the dusting on the surface is starting to really get in there. Switch off to about five minutes here. You can see it's really starting to eat it. Now the craziest thing about this is, uh, I mean, this camera angle is just kind of sped up here, but when I actually get in close onto these things, you can actually see really closely where the solution is. And you can see, even though the solution is on multiple parts, only some of them are rusting. That's because some of them are hit with the wire wheel. Some of them are contaminated, some of them are not. This is pretty crazy to look at. 
Now seriously, just look at that 10 minutes into this and you can see where every single spot, even though there's solution on the spots that are stainless and it's not rusting, but every spot where he actually was hit with the wire brush is rusty, including the stainless steel weld itself. This weld right here, let me wipe this off, but this weld is rusting. It's all coming off the surface. This is just absolutely nuts. And everything, of course, this one was the uh, ER70 series of uh, welds that were on here. These are starting to rust away, but most important or most impressive is this piece right here has a solution on both sides. And the only side that really rusted out was the side that was hit with the wheel. So at the end of the day, there's actually something to be learned here. And that is very, very simply put, if you are using anything to prep your metal, make sure you use a dedicated brush or wheel or whatever you have in order to do that. Otherwise, it's going to be subject to rusting. All that impregnation and everything else, it's pretty killer. And of course, just to recap, if you want to weld stainless steel with, you know, any mild steel or carbon steel filler rod, hey, there's nothing really stopping you except for, uh, well, somewhere on down the road, it's not going to be stainless anymore. So that's about going to wrap it up for this episode. I want to thank you guys for watching as always. If you need to get in contact with us, you can always hit us up on the facebook.com slash the fabricator series, Instagram at the dot fabricator or the fabrication series.com website. You can drop us an email. All that contact info is down in the description below. I want to thank you guys once again. I'll see you guys on the next episode.